So lacing a wheel can feel like a very complicated, daunting process, but I'm going to try to explain it to you in a way today that breaks it down step by step and makes it feel a little bit easier. So we're going to be lacing up two wheels today. The first one, we're going to be starting with the Alienation Tin Man front hub and the Alienation Vandal rim. We're going to be using these S&M spokes all the way throughout all of them and tightening and getting everything dialed in with Park Tools. Shout out to Park Tools. So to start off here, if you're ready to start this lacing process, we're going to assume that you already have the spokes, hubs, and rims that you need. But if you don't yet have those, what you're going to need to understand before you get to this process is that each different hub and rim combination requires a specific length of spoke. And that can also be affected by the different lacing pattern that you choose whenever you're doing this. I feel like within BMX, three cross is very common. Four cross is also something you may hear of sometimes. But with that, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, but you wanna figure this out, usually a mail order can help you if you're ordering everything from them. But if you're not and you have a hub and rim, a way you can figure out what spoke length that you need is by going to bmxunion.com and clicking on their spoke calculator. You input the hub and rim that you have and it spits out the length of spoke that you would need for both three or four cross. And if it's a cassette hub that has two different size flanges, it will give you the two different spoke lengths that you would need for that in both three and four cross. And before we actually get started here on lacing up this front wheel, I figured I should get ahead of this video and give you guys the information that you should know if you're lacing up a rear wheel. And that for one is that there are two different flange sizes on most BMX freestyle cassette or free coaster hubs. You can see that this side is smaller than this side. And what that means is that technically you should have two different lengths of spokes because this smaller side is going to need a longer spoke in order to reach the rim, at least longer than what this larger side would need. And with that as well, I have noticed personally that I can get away with using a very specific single size between these. But what this means is that in the truing process, the side that is longer is going to have the nipple tightened down much further to get to a properly dished and properly trued wheel. So I don't recommend using all the same size spokes, but it is something you can get away with if you have the experience in it. And other than that, when it comes to the rear hub, one thing that you want to pay attention to that is different than the front is that if you want your writing on your wheel to be a specific orientation, say for example, we want the drive side to have the writing facing so that you read it from that side of the bike like so. And to do that, you're going to want to set everything down in the orientation that you want it to be in when you build this so that you have it the way that you want it as you're going. But that's the most specific tips that I have whenever it comes to lacing a rear hub that has different size flanges and just being a rear hub in general. So now let's get to the lacing process. We're going to assume starting out here that you have everything that you need and you're ready to start building. And we are going to start with this front hub. And there's something that I feel like some people like to do whenever they're lacing a wheel in that if there is a logo on their hub like this one, they'll like to make that logo line up with the valve hole whenever you look through it, just as kind of a perfectionist type thing and just a badge of honor in lacing a wheel. So to do that, I figured out that you can simply figure out which way to orient spokes to get it in the right spot by setting everything down like this as it would be with the logo facing the valve hole. And you're gonna take a look from the valve hole and go straight to your wheel or your hub. And then you're gonna figure out the closest spoke hole in your hub to that. And you're gonna count that as one. Then you go two, three, and four. And that fourth one is where you're gonna start by putting a spoke down through the hub. See here, down through the hub. And this spoke is the one that you're gonna put directly left of your valve hole on your rim. And we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna tighten this down with a nipple, just a couple turns. We're gonna go two, three, four four turns there on that one. And we are going to do the exact same thing for every single spoke 
that we put in here. Four initial turns of the nipple. So from here on the hub, we're gonna grab another spoke and we're gonna skip one hole on the same side of the hub. We're gonna drop another spoke down that one and that is going to go into the fourth hole from the one we just started with. So if we take a closer look here at the rim, you can see that we started with a hole that is on the right side of the rim here, the top side. We're skipping three holes, so lower hole, upper hole, lower hole, upper hole, and this is the next one that we're going to put the spoke that we just inserted in the hub into. So we'll just go ahead and do that. And then we're just gonna repeat that process all the way around this rim on this side of the hub. So I'll walk you through it. We're just gonna go one, two, three, four. That's four half turns, which equals two full turns. Skip a hole on our hub. And then we're gonna skip three holes again on the rim, drop it in here, and we're just gonna keep this going all the way around. Four, that is two full turns. We're gonna keep going here, and this is a concept I feel you should be able to grasp from just seeing it a couple times. So we're going to speed through and get the rest of these tightened, and we'll get to the next step after that. So one thing that I feel a lot of people talk about whenever they're doing a wheel lacing video or how to is that you can put all of these spokes in from the get go. You can put all of the, once you figure out the first one, you can put all of them in, but I don't like to do it that way because I feel like having all of those spokes in there kind of can get in your way. And as long as you can keep track of what you're doing, you don't have to worry too much about this part. You just keep repeating the process and just making sure that you're getting that fourth spoke hole. And with these rims, it's pretty easy because it has that upper and lower spoke hole because the rims are drilled in a way that is called 4D drilling, which, which makes the spoke go the exact angle it needs to to get to your hub. And because of that, you can pretty much just go to the next upper hole, skip that one, and go to the second one after that, which is ends up being three skipped holes and being on the fourth one. So now we want to make sure we get this into the correct hole here. Because this is a tubeless compatible rim, there is a Presta valve hole here. We're going to make sure we don't put it into that one. We get the last one on this side. And now we can see that we have half of the spokes on this side of the hub and rim installed. And the next step is to flip the rim over, find our valve hole, put it away from us again. And we're gonna just take a look at this. And now to find the next spoke hole on the hub that we wanna use, we find that original spoke that we put in there. You can see this is our original spoke. We put this spoke down through this spoke hole on the rim and you can see that it falls directly to the right of our original. If we put it over here, it is on the left side. We want the one directly on the right. And now you might be asking, well, where does that one go? It goes directly to the right of the first spoke that we installed, right beside it. And we can tighten the spoke in here. Remember, we're doing four turns or four half turns, two full turns. One, two, three, four. And now we have this process started and to keep going here, the first thing we're gonna need to do is rotate our hub away from our valve hole. So we can see our valve hole is here. We rotate our hub away from the valve hole. This is what keeps your spokes from crossing in front of the valve hole and making it very difficult to put air in your tires. So the next step in this process is the same thing as when we installed the rest of the spokes on the first one. We skip a hole on the hub, and then we skip three holes on the rim and put it into the next fourth hole, which is actually, once again, one, two, three, four. It's on top again for one, and for two, it's directly to the right of the already installed spoke. So we're just gonna go through, and this one makes it pretty easy because all we have to do is make sure we just skip one hole and then put it directly to the right of the one that was already installed. So one, two, three, four. Make sure we keep our hub rotated here. Skip a hole, 
pull the spoke through. And once again, some people will say you can put all of these spokes in at once. I just personally feel like it gets to be too much to keep track of. <clears throat> and I like to do it one at a time. So there's not much more to say on this part of the process. So we are just going to speed through this. And at this point, we're already halfway done lacing up this wheel. As I said at the beginning, it can feel like a daunting process, but when you break it down into these steps, it becomes actually pretty easy. And this next part is what feels the most complicated and difficult, but it's actually not that bad. And I'll explain how you do it right now. So we have our wheel here, and you can see that we have our hub rotation, and we put our spokes down through the spoke holes on every single one that we've installed. That means that moving forward, every single spoke that we put in here will go from the back side of the hub and go outward. And then this now is where the crossing portion of these three and four cross patterns that we talk about comes from. So you can see here that if we put this spoke in here and we put it with the spokes, in order to get that crossing pattern, you know, three cross, so one, two, three, in order to get that, it's literally impossible by going with the direction of the spokes. So we recognize that we have to oppose the rotation of these spokes and cross it in order to get our crossing pattern. And what we get with three cross is that we're crossing this first spoke here, then we're crossing a second, and here's our third that we're crossing. And with that, we go over, over, under. When we go under this last spoke, we find the spoke hole on the rim. And with these, it's very easy because we can see that the spoke holes that are available, we have the lower and then the upper. And because this is on this side, we want the upper, which means we put our spoke through there and then we tighten down the nipple. Remembering that we are tightening all of these exactly the same. So now here we have it. Cross, three cross pattern with this, and we can just do like we've been doing for every single other step and just repeat it for the remaining part of each side. Now with this, you can go all the way around and just go to the next one and keep going around. But what I like to do with this, just to make it feel a little bit easier when it comes to getting the last couple spokes in, is I like to find where we started with this pattern and then we go to the exact opposite side and put a spoke up through. And then we go over, over, under, and find our corresponding spoke hole on the rim. And now that we did one on the opposite side, it kind of evens things out a little bit more in order to keep going. So one, two, three, four. And now we can see that our pattern has started here and now we don't have to worry as much about keeping our hub rotation because those two spokes we just put in keep the rotation pretty much for us. So now we can just continue this process where we go up through a spoke hole, then we grab it, pull it the rest of the way through, go over, over, under, find our spoke hole on the rim again, and repeat this until we finish this side of the rim. So we will fast forward through this and you can follow along and go back and forth in the video, but just make sure that when you're doing this, that you're putting your spokes up through the rim so that when you take a look at your hub, you can see that we have the head of the spoke and then we have the bend of the spoke. That's what it should look like head of the spoke, then there should be a bend here, head of the spoke, then a bend there. All right, so we can keep going here over, over, under, and I'm just gonna fast forward through this process so that you guys can follow along and then find out what comes next. And as we're finishing up with this side here, I just wanted to say in this video to don't feel discouraged if you mess up and have to take something apart. I know it can be frustrating, but I'll be totally honest, my first, I don't know, 
20, <laughs> however many, like first lot of wheels I built, I had to take everything out and start over because I did something wrong. So if you just follow along with this process as slowly and as carefully as possible, you shouldn't mess up too bad. But if you do, don't feel discouraged. Just take it apart, stay zen, and put it back together following the process. But as you can see here, we have one whole side of this wheel complete at this point. And now with the other side, we can literally just repeat the exact same process that we went through where we put the spoke up through the hole here. And then when we bring it through, in order to do our cross here, we can see that there's only one spoke hole on the rim here that is even available for this spoke after we've crossed two, three times. So we go over, over, under once again. And then we just put our spoke into the only remaining spoke hole. Now it's at this point that you may start to notice that you have to pull a little bit harder with things in order to get the spokes to go through and get the nipple tightened onto there. That's just because naturally with putting a wheel together like this, we're creating tension, pulling in so many different directions that it's gonna start to get a little bit tighter. So I do the exact same thing on this part that I did on the other side where I go to the opposite side of the hub and put the spoke in and cross it a couple times and install it so that we have a little bit more even of force as we're finishing up with this build. And once again, the process is pretty simple of just repeating the process exactly the same way, making sure we're going up through the hub with our spokes, making sure up through the hub before we do our crossing pattern in order to install this. And another note on the don't be discouraged if you have to start over part of things is just that even in this video, I recognized at one point that I accidentally said or did something wrong and had to go back and fix it. Had to start over with that part. It was just one spoke luckily, but we did have a mistake and I fixed it. And wheel building is the kind of thing that you can just go backwards and fix again. And I don't know, there's something fun about building wheels that I enjoy. I think maybe it's because it's a very logical sequential thing that when you break it down into steps, it's pretty simple. So two, three, four, we could finish out with the rest of this and our rim will be laced. Another tip that I suppose I should be giving here at this point is that you are going to have to do a little bit of persuasion, I guess you could say, in order to install these spokes at this point from the last side of the rim, just because there's so many installed. You can see here, I'm bending this spoke quite a lot so that we don't scratch the rim as we're doing this. It's very easy to let the spoke just kind of stay straight and end up scratching the crap out of your rim in the process. And if you're lacing up a new wheel, I don't think that's something that any of us want. Three, four, and we have three more that we can buzz through here. So another thing I'm encountering here right now that's probably a good thing to tell you guys about is that we are to a point with this wheel build that the spokes are just harder to get through. So I'm actually using the spoke wrench to do our one, two, three, four half turns in getting these nipples installed because I just can't get them out the same way that I could. As you do this, everything just tightens up and gets a little bit more difficult as long as you have the correct size spokes. And that's 
Pretty important in this process, if you don't have the correct size spokes, if they are way too long and you have spokes sticking out through, if like this is what it looks like, but it's the spoke, whenever you're done, you're gonna pop tires and it's not gonna be fun. And if it's too short, you're likely not even gonna be able to reach these spokes with the nipples once you get to a certain point. And that is a bummer. That's why you have to use something like the Alienation Spoke, or not Alienation, the BMX Union Spoke Calculator in order to figure out what you need exactly. So this is actually the last one for this side. Happy days. There we go. We have a laced wheel. And as you can see, it looks as it should. We do not have any obstruction here for our valve hole. So we can get the pump in there easily. It's the way that it should be. And if I look down through my valve hole, oh my goodness, it does exist. Let's see if we can show you guys just like that. We have the Alienation logo on our valve hole lined up perfectly. So with that being said, that is how you lace this front wheel. Next, we're going to be talking about how you lace the rear side. And now we have everything ready to start lacing up this rear wheel. In this process, it's good to keep in mind that it's pretty much the same thing as the front wheel we just talked about. So we're gonna time lapse through and then reiterate the steps as we go. But one thing you wanna definitely keep in mind is that if you're going against my recommendation of getting two different size spokes for a two different size flange hub, and you're using the same side, that when you go to true this thing, you're going to have to tighten the larger size flange nipples much, much more in order to get this thing dished properly. Don't recommend it unless you are experienced at doing this. So with this process, if we want to line up something like this A on the hub, with the valve hole, just like we did with the front hub, it's the exact same process in that we set everything down the way that we want it with the valve hole directly across from this A. Then we find the spoke hole on the rim or hub that is corresponding with this valve hole and we count it as one, two, three, and four. And we put the spoke down through there and that is our first spoke that is installed here and that goes directly to the left of our valve hole on our rim these cassette rear hubs or these rear hubs in general are a little bit heavier so they want to move around a little bit more but we can get it maneuvered so once again is the exact same process where we skip a hole on the hub we put the spoke down through then we skip three holes on the rim and go into the fourth hole. So we put the first spoke in right here on the rim. We're skipping one, two, three, and going into the fourth hole. This is also an upper hole as we explained, so it's easy to know that we have the right one. Don't mistake the tubeless hole for a spoke hole. It does have a decal on it. So with that, we're gonna be putting our spoke through that hole and tightening it down with a nipple. And we're just going to continue the process the same way that we did with the front where we're skipping a hole on the hub, skipping three holes on the rim and going into the fourth. So we're just going to continue this and time lapse through that for you. Okay, so we've got half of the spokes on this side installed. Once again, it is the exact same process. We flip this thing over, and before we do any kind of rotating, which it tried to do on its own there, we stand up and we find the spoke hole that is directly to the right of the one that we already used on this other side. So we can see here, if we drop it down through this one, we go to the left. If we drop it down this one, we go through the right. We're dropping the spoke down through and then putting this one directly to the right of the one that we already installed. And with this rim, we can see that it is on the correct side of the rim 
with that hole. So we're gonna time lapse through this process where we are skipping one hole at a time on the hub and then once again, skipping three holes on the rim and going into the fourth. But this time we have a pre-installed spoke that we can go just to the right of every single time. So let's just get right on through this one. Okay, so we have half the spokes on this wheel installed now. What we wanna make sure that we remember with this process is that we pay attention to where our valve hole on the rim is and we rotate our hub away from that valve hole. We can see rotating it right here puts it away from that valve hole. We do not wanna cross spokes over top of that because it makes it really hard to pump up your tire if you do that. So we can start with the crossing process here once again. We're running all of the spokes up through the hub this time. All of them up to this point went down. We are going up with that. We're gonna run one up through here. We are going to go against the rotation of the spokes with this one in order to get our cross. And with that, we crossed one spoke, two spokes, under the third spoke, and then we go into the top hole on the rim that aligns with that. And we are going to repeat that process with this entire side of the hub. All right, so we have this side completely done. It is the exact same process on the other side, just making sure all of our spokes go up through the hub, just like this. But this time, it goes the opposite direction in order to cross the pattern before we were bringing them to us. This time, we go over them this way. So we make sure we, once again, go over, over, under, and then into the remaining spoke hole. It is the last spoke hole that is available, and that makes it a little bit easier on us to finish up lacing this wheel because it's just much harder to mess up when you only have one spot to put that spoke. So, same process on repeat. Once again, let's time lapse through it. And at this point, if you guys have followed along with this video in the steps that I have given you and broken this down, you should have a properly laced wheel. After this comes the truing process, which is a little bit more complex than this, but like I said, if you break it down, it can be just as simple, but here we have it. Finished wheel. We have two finished wheels that we have to true at this point, so we have a big old shout out to Park Tool coming and something very exciting for you guys to see next to true these wheels.